What is the upskies, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the GX WrestleCast. This is episode 78 of my little wrestling recap show, where once a week I go through all of the major WWE and AEW shows, give you the recap, let you know what's going on, review the matches, let you know if you should skip the show or check out the whole show, and all that great stuff. At the end of the week, I give out my three stars for the three my three favorite matches of the week, and... In a week like this week, where there's a big pay-per-view on tap, I will be doing an extra episode reviewing that pay-per-view. So, with that being said, let's get into this week's episode, and we have a just a really rough week in the wrestling world. We lost two major members in the wrestling business, uh, the first being... The legendary, the hardcore legend, Terry Funk, and jeez, man, uh... Terry Funk, an absolute legend, Uh, more so he was quite before my time, but I do have a lot of memories. There is a particular ECW DVD that I had uh, growing up, and it had, I think, two matches with Terry Funk in it. One of them was a triple threat uh, with him versus the Sandman and Tommy Dreamer, I think, and the other one was the barbed wire match with him and Sabu, and I was absolutely blown away. Because even at that time, he was like 50, 55 years old, and he was doing a moonsault off of the top of a ladder. He was in a barbed wire wrapped ring match. It was one of the craziest matches I've ever seen, and it was even crazier that it was being done by uh, a guy in his 50s nonetheless. But uh, Terry Funk, an absolute legend. There's a handful of moments that I remember from kind of the attitude beginning of the attitude era kind of just getting into it where he he returned as uh oh fuck chainsaw charlie it was super random he came back with cactus jack or mankind i don't think it was mankind i think he was cactus jack and he came back with this freaking chainsaw he was being wild i think he had a sock on his head or some shit and he took this gnarly gnarly bump uh, they put him in a trash bin or something. They threw the bin off of the stage, and it was just ugh, absolutely brutal. But Terry Funk, uh, lots of hardcore matches. He's kind of the hardcore messiah. He would have these uh, branding matches where he would like brand people with, I don't know, man. I didn't get to see a lot of Terry Funk outside of ECW or WWE. I didn't get a lot of that. But I imagine there's probably going to be some great documentaries rather already out there something made for Terry Funk and we can get more in depth with his career but a very sad passing absolutely and we're not done we have another one this one much more blindsiding we uh we lost Bray Wyatt also known at oh geez I, I should have got his real name but Bray Wyatt has passed away at the young age of 36 years old and it's super eerie I was at work when my friend texted me about that. He said, have you heard about Bray Wyatt? And then, bam, it was all over the place, all over the internet. And it's strange because the day before, I was like, oh, man, I was just thinking about Bray Wyatt. I'm like, oh, he should be coming back soon. And then, bam. So not many details have been released from what I read. He suffered a heart attack, and he did catch covid And that kind of made some things worse, but he appeared to be on the mend, and then he had a heart attack and sadly did not make it through that. So, uh, really devastating, man. A very creative, unique wrestler. I know maybe he wasn't everybody's cup of tea, but uh, an extremely creative wrestler. He was very... Just something different. I wasn't watching wrestling when he first came in, but he definitely immediately caught my eye the second I started rewatching. I'm like, what's this Bray? What's this Wyatt family thing? Who's this guy? And yeah, I immediately Bray Wyatt was one of the first guys I got attached to of the of the new uh, crop of wrestlers. And the Fiend, I thought it was it was interesting. It was good, though that kind of gimmick you can only go so far with it. I thought they did. Uh, some things really good, some things were rather disappointing, like the Hell in a Cell match and stuff like that versus Seth Rollins. But the Firefly Funhouse, that was excellent. Uh, the match that he had against John Cena at WrestleMania was one of the most creative, funny, just awesome matches. I think they just put that one up on YouTube, so absolutely check that out. One of the most unique matches ever. They really like draw the curtain back and a lot of fun Easter eggs in that match. I'll probably rewatch that one really soon, but man, absolutely lost this, this guy way too, way too soon. Like it, again, I get another kind of, 
I'm only 30 years old and like to think like six years from now, like I could pass away, like to think of how big of an impact that would probably be to a lot of people. Like Bray Wyatt, it was, was a father and a, a husband, I'm guessing, but geez, man, that is just devastating. I'm very, very sad and, and just, yeah, man, kind of devastated by that news really sucks. I, I like Bray Wyatt quite a bit, man. Like I, I just like that he was trying to be different and he was creative and it was just something Something new, so a uh, really, really rough loss, and just to put a cherry on top, uh, apparently Bob Barker. Bob Barker, everybody, he's he's gone too, so uh, at least he made it to 99 years old. I mean, oh, it would have been so right if he hit that dollar, you know what I'm saying, the 100 mark, you know, he, oh, Price is Right, man, I grew up on Price is Right, absolutely, it's probably my favorite game show of all time, I watched a ton, a ton of Price is Right, like, oh my goodness, uh, so, a legendary man, and, uh, yeah, just, fuck, rest in peace, really rough freaking week for just all around, I mean, god, that is awful, so, we'll try our best here to, uh, move on into the recap here, so we'll start off, uh, I think we'll do, let's do Raw and NXT, and then I'll do some predictions for the upcoming all-in AEW show, I'll do, uh, Try and do them as fast as possible. There is 487 matches on that card, so it might take me a second, but I'll try my best. All right, let's start with Raw in Quebec City. Still doing the Canada swing here. I'm loving it. And, of course, we must start with Sami Zayn. He gets a massive hometown welcome from his hometown crowd in Quebec City. Judgment Day start to yuck the yum. They interrupt the fun. Sami Zayn tells them he ain't alone. Out comes fellow hometowner it is kevin owens oh baby kevin and sammy whoop some ass whoop some candy ass challenge judgment day to a match for later on in the show crowd going absolutely banana and a nice way to start the show i mean it's it's a layup i mean you get the hometown guy out there crowd loses it thumbs up good stuff now we got the new day versus Matt Riddle and Drew McIntyre, the Glass Bros. I'm just calling it, calling them that. If they're not gonna do it, I'll do it. Drew tosses Bro over the ropes onto the New Day. I I get a kick out out of any tag team that does that kind of thing, using their own partner as a weapon. Fantastic. Drew McIntyre is hulking up on the apron, looking for a tag. He just had me giggling. He was absolutely freaking going nuts on the apron. Viking Raiders interfere without the referee seeing it, allowing Kofi to pin Matt Riddle for the W. Uh, though the finish was kind of lame, I do like what I'm seeing from the Glass Bros uh, so far. I didn't get enough Drew McIntyre in there, really. He was just going nuts on the outside, so teasing the Drew McIntyre. New Day, of course, good as always. The finish stunk, but the Viking Raiders getting involved. Probably going to be fighting with the Glass Bros, I, w- I would be thinking. Uh, there's only so many more times that the Viking Raiders can fight New Day. Though it's always good, it's just they've done it so many times. So yeah, probably moving into a Glass Bros versus the Viking Raiders. Maybe a Viking boat ship match or some sort of thing. That would be pretty cool. But I like this match. 7 out of 10, pretty good. We move on to an Intercontinental Championship match. Gunther defending against Chad Gable. And we have no, no part, no one coming out, just 1v1 right here. So Gunther throws Chad out of the ring, plants Gable back first onto the barricade. How you doing? That is an ouch. Gable takes a nasty chop midair, and then a couple stiff lariats. Goodness, just nasty. Thumbs up. Gable battles back with a deadlift German suplex. On the outside, Gable suplexes Gunther over the barricade. Like, holy shit. Chad beats the count, winning the match, but not the championship. You have to pin or submit to win the championship. Buddy picks up a massive W. The first win over Gunther in, like, a very, very long time. Uh, Man, just an awesome, brutal match right here. Gunther, Vicious, and Gable... Fantastic underdog performance. I I knew my boy wouldn't let me down in this one. The finish makes Gable look really legit, like he could actually maybe beat Gunther for the championship, but also keeping the championship on Gunther. I I gotta give him their props for that. That was very well executed. 8 out of 10. This was a great match. Gunther flips out on Imperium backstage. Ludwig is motivated to fix it and, and make Gunther happy. And Giovanni just stands there. He's confused a little bit. So, all right, moving on. It is Cody Rhodes. He is being interviewed with Byron. 
He drags him out to the ring to say hi to the crowd and hype up his boys, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, drawing in a little bit, a little bit of that hometown love. You know what I'm saying? Good, good stuff. We got Shinsuke. He reveals he knows that Seth, uh, he knows Seth Rollins' weakness. So last week he whispered a little thump thump in his ear. We didn't get to find out what that was, and now we do. Apparently, Shinsuke knows that Seth Rollins' back is broken. And when he said that, all I can think of is Mike Tyson. Hey, Mike, hey, how's it going? What's going on here? Uh, my, my back is broken. Your, your back is broken? Yeah, spinal. It's one of the all-time greatest things of all time. Just check it out. Anyway, uh, yeah, Shinsuke claims that he knows that Seth Rollins' back is broken. And he will destroy him and take the championship. Um, I'm very excited about this uh, particular segment because we got subtitles for Shinsuke. He's speaking his native tongue with a little bit of English in there. It was good. It was well done. I enjoyed this. The subtitles work, though I think a mouthpiece would be the better direction to go with it, but still pretty good. I'll give it a thumbs up. We move on. Rhea Ripley with Dom Dom versus Candice LeRae with Indy Hartwell. LeRae gets a quick near fall off the hop, and then Ripley absolutely destroys Candice, puts her in this fancy new submission for a quick W. Raquel Rodriguez arrives, still with her injured leg, but still manages to beat up the champ here a little bit, grabs a microphone, claims that she's 100%, I don't know about that, and then uh, she will battle for the championship at payback. So Raquel versus Rhea, neat, I guess. All right, moving on. We got a quick fired up video promo from Tommaso Ciampa, and he throws the chair violently when he's all finished. All right, we're back on track. Tommaso Ciampa, good. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa, not Champia. Good stuff. Now we got the Miz. He cuts a promo, trash talking L.A. Knight. Yeah, uh, bragging about himself and says he's gonna beat a guy ten times the man L.A. Knight ever was or is. And that man is Akira Tozawa. Now, I'm a big old fan of Akira Tozawa, so I, I got a kick out of that. Miz gets angry at Tozawa for saying, yeah, like 20 times, so he kicks him in the face. LA Knight, yeah, he arrives as the bell rings. Miz is pissed. Miz tries to throw Tozawa into Knight. It's countered into a nice Hurricanrana into the steps instead. Miz gets cocky, gets rolled up, and loses to my boy, Tezawa. A fun, quick match with Knight mouthing off on commentary all throughout. Yeah, thumbs up for that. Pretty fun. We got Drew McIntyre backstage considering ditching Matt Riddle. New Day say, nah, nah. They want to have another match with those two. McIntyre says, I will consider this. Ah, it's too early to break up the Glass Bros just yet. There's some potential here, but it's not going to be a forever thing. Now it's Becky Lynch's turn. She cuts a promo. Again, cannot wait to get her hands on Trish Stratus, this time in a solid steel cage. Trish and Zoe arrive. They trash talk Becky. Trish starts out nice to uh, the Canadian crowd, but then turns on them. Oh, dear. Lynch challenges Zoe to a Falls Count Anywhere match next week. Good segment right here. Again, Trish just really fun on the mic. Becky really fired up, and, you know, Zoe wasn't really saying much, but... I like Zoe. Good stuff. Thumbs up. We move on. It is a match. Piper Nevin and Chelsea Green versus Caden Carter and Katana Chance, who I uh, they've kind of been lost in the shuffle here a little bit. Uh, Chance and Carter, former champions. Let's see how they do. Piper destroys the former tag champs with a huge diving splash for a quick W. So they didn't do very good. Piper picks up the title, and Chelsea, she picks her up too, walks off to the back, and I'm loving this pairing so far. I really like uh, Piper just being like, yup, this is my championship. You're mine. You're my partner. Come with me. I'll drag you around. This is, I'm liking it. Thumbs up. We got Seth Rollins getting interviewed about his back. He admits that he does have fractures in his back and he cannot keep up this current pace. What did I freaking say, Seth? I said you can't be keeping up this pace and now you're hurt. Rollins is upset. Shinsuke was talking about his family. And this was just a good, fired-up promo from the champ. Kind of realistic. Good shit. Thumbs up. He may legitimately have a broken back. I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked. Main event time. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus Finn Balor and Damian Priest. Ripley yelling at Finn and Priest to figure their shit out and work together and win this match. Will they be able to do it? I don't know. Kevin Owens and Sammy all over Judgment Day off of the opening bell. Here comes J.D. McDonough. He shows up. 
tosses Finn Balor the money in the bri- uh, money in the bank briefcase. Kevin Owens intercepts it and bonks Balor on the head. Oh my goodness, this seems familiar. Referee calls a DQ. Brawl breaks out. Cody Rhodes runs down saying, Nana, nah, nah. we ain't ending Raw like that. Let's have a six-way right now. A, a six-man tag team match. I- okay, Judgment Day versus Cody Rhodes, Sami Zayn, and Kevin Owens now. Ripley tells a fan straight up to kiss her ass. Clear as day on the microphone. I got a good giggle out of that. Sammy hits a haluva kick on Dom. Then he eats a stunner from Kevin Owens. The good guys win. Just, of course, just a good crowd-pleasing match with the hometown boys getting the job done. Good pace. Nice near falls in this one. I like Dom's selling of the stunner. It was pretty good. 7 out of 10. Nice, nice stuff. And a great, fun episode of Raw this week. Really milking that hometown, those Canadians. You know, we just love our wrestling so much, we can't get enough of it. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, obviously, uh, having a good amount of time on the show, milking that crowd, like I said. Enjoyed the segments on the show. Tozawa was a fun appearance. I, I, I really like that guy. I wish he was around a little bit more. Piper and Chelsea Green, I'm really liking this gimmick and this, uh, this kind of thing they got going on it's pretty fun we'll see how far that goes and fucking subtitles for shinsuke yes eight out of ten great raw this week let's move on to nxt they're doing heat wave this week starting off with dons and stack hanging out with the family at a pool party type thing running down tonight's matches i thought this was a cool way to intro the show uh yeah it was i liked it oh it was pretty good now we got the opening match. It is Trick Williams versus Ilya Dragunov. Oh, baby. I've been, I'm pretty excited for this one. Let's see how it goes. Trick getting whacked with numerous chops and machine gun chops. Like, oh, my goodness. Trick explodes with the wicked knee to Dragunov's head, busting him open a little bit. That knee was fucking wicked. Woo! Good Lord. Thumbs up for that. Top rope book end by Trick. We got a near fall right there. Ilya gets his receipt, kicks Willie right in the back of the head. Got a stiff power bomb and a sick forearm, but Trick is able to kick out of that. Ilya goes to the top for yet another brutal forearm to finally put Trick away for the W. Oh my goodness, that was a lot better than I was expecting. This was fantastic. Just outstanding performances. Brutally stiff. That knee from Trick was disgusting. Ilya kicking him in the back of the head for a receipt. That was nice. Selling was absolutely outstanding as always by Druganov. I mean, Druganov makes everybody look good. But I thought Trick did a really good job as well. Like, you know, maybe he laid it in a little thick. But I'm betting that Druganov was said, I'd rather you hit me in the face than make it look like shit. So I really got a kick out of this match. Eight and a half out of ten. Well done. We move on to Ava Rain getting into the ring with the schism versus Ivy Nile. Ava off to a pretty good start until Ivy catches her into a dragon sleeper. Ava forced to tap out. Schism members jump into the ring. Ivy drops a bunch of them. They take Ava and leave. Alrighty then. We got Wes Lee. He gets into it backstage with Ilya Dragunov. Wes Lee is still confident he will beat Carmelo tonight. Dragunov ain't so confident he's going to get the job done. Wes says fine. He will beat him too, but not right now. Clearly he's busy tonight. He's got a championship match later on. They'll fight later, and that will be a really fun match. And now we got another Heritage Cup championship match. Nathan Frazier defends the real Heritage Cup with... Tyler Bate versus Noam Dar with his group, The Metaphor. Daba Kato out of nowhere decides I'm choke slamming Tyler Bate on the apron right here, right now. Just an absolute dick move, Daba Kato. So Tyler Bate is out of here. He's hurt. Picture perfect springboard DDT and a standing shooting star press by Frazier. Got a near fall right there and it is still tied 0 0 after three rounds. Dar goes up by one early in the fourth round. Frazier bounces back with a superplex, spinning neckbreaker, bre- bleh, superplex and a spinning neckbreaker combo to tie it up 1-1. End of the fourth round. So the fourth round was buzzing. Frazier hits a huge dive to the outside on Dar and Mensa. Lash Legend holds on to Frazier's leg just long enough. He runs out of time to pin Dar. Oh, 
Moving on to the sixth round now, Meta 4 distracting Frazier. He misses the Phoenix Splash. Dar nails the Nova Roller and wins back the Real Heritage Cup. So there you go. Another good entry into the Noam Dar Nathan Frazier Heritage Cup series. And yet again, another good creative use of the clock. They're not just using the same ideas every time. It seems they have a little something different up their sleeve every match. So I got to give them props for that. Good fast-paced action. The commercials, though, were upsetting. They did cause me to miss, like, a good chunk of this match, which just is not awesome. There was, like, you it would be the end of the round, and then you would come back, and there's one minute left in the round. You're like, well, fuck, man. I just, like, miss. That's too much missing. I don't like that. Seven and a half out of ten, though. This was a really good match. We got Tiffany Stratton, who I'm not very impressed with lately. Let's see what she's up to. She's cutting a promo claiming she will be the best of all time. Doubt it. Out comes Gigi Dolan making fun of Stratton for tapping out. Kiana James wants a shot at Tiffany, and so does Blair Davenport. Trash talking with Gigi, and finally, here comes... Roxanne Perez, who makes her way to the ring, she throws the first punch, and then, of course, all hell breaks loose. Solid segment right here, but, I mean, it's just a shame, like, Stratton still isn't defending her title on what is uh, a higher-end episode of NXT. We still don't have an opponent for her yet. There was no number one contender on this show, so, yeah, not impressed with this, but it was a solid segment. At least they're, they're getting there. It's just, what the fuck are they doing? We got the metaphor. They're celebrating their big win backstage. Noam Dar is served papers saying that he will defend the cup at the next live event. But that's not until five weeks. So, metaphor is going on vacation. Aw, yeah. I mean, that kind of sucks. We're not going to see a Heritage Cup match for a minute. But, uh, yeah. All right. We got a mixed tag team match now. Rhea Ripley and Dom Mysterio going up against Dragon Lee and Lyra Valkyria. Lyra nails Dom with a Huracarana. Lee and Valkyria hit a stereo splash together. Mommy catches Lyra, slams her hard into the barricade. How you doing? Raquel Rodriguez out of nowhere jumps Rhea Ripley. Ref misses all of that. Dragon hitting a Moonsault DDT on Dom and pins the North American champ. Fun mixed tag team match right here. Uh, I liked when Dom was getting beat up by Lyra. I wish, like, you know... Ripley, like, beat the crap out of Dragon or something. That would, that'd be cool, too. Nice high-flying, solid chemistry, I thought, between both the teams. Dom versus Dragon Lee for the North American title up next. It, it looks like that's what we're set up for. Dragon just pinned the champion, so that's generally how that goes. And I could see Dragon Lee picking up the championship after that. I, I could see it. I mean, there's only so much... So long that Dom and Rhea can keep doing Raw and NXT on a weekly basis. So, I mean, is this going to be the end for the North, North American Championship run for Dom? I'm starting to feel maybe. We move on. Tiffany Stratton tells us there will be a Fatal 4-Way Contenders match for her title next week. Of course. Alrighty then. Thea Hale is met backstage by JC Jane, who is being kind of oddly friendly with her. Interesting. Uh, don't trust her. I d don't you trust her either, Thea. Don't do it. She's up to no good. She's up to nanigans. We move on. It is Baron Corbin. He jumps Von Wagner before their match. They brawl around the ring. Braun Breaker takes out Baron. Barks a whole bunch of times, you know, rah, rah, rah and stuff like that. And it's over? Uh, yeah, so no match. So it looks like we're setting up for maybe some sort of triple threat thing. That could be a lot of fun, but I I'm a little disappointed I didn't get my match. Moving on is main event time. NXT Championship on the line. Carmelo Hayes defending versus Wes Lee. Melo with nothing but net and like, I don't know if it, he kind of messed it up. So it kind of went from like a nothing but net into a DDT. But he does this through the announce table on Wes and it was just a nasty looking spot right there. Like, whoo, what a car wreck. Thumbs up. Lee somehow is alive after that. He goes for a dive, misses it, and just splashes onto the floor. That just looked fucking nasty. Really painful. Wes Lee barely makes it back into the ring, only to eat nothing but net. Carmelo Hayes retains the championship. 
a lovely main event. The flow in the ring was spectacular, man. They were just like water. The athleticism was ridiculous. High flying was great. That table bump was ridiculous. I like the I like the length on this match. It wasn't too long, wasn't too short, and it makes it might sound like um Wesley didn't really get involved in this match very much, but he absolutely did. He put on a great performance as well. He was there, but he just couldn't quite get the whole job done. And uh, hoping nobody was hurt in that match. Kind of looked like maybe maybe there is an injury, but we'll, we'll find out at some point. This was a great match. 8.5 out of 10. And a well-done midweek special for NXT. Three really good matches on this card. If they were just able to set up that Fatal 4-Way Contenders match for this show instead of setting up for next week, that would have really put this show over the edge, I think. But I still thought it was a really well-done show. 8 out of 10 for NXT Heat Wave. All right, let's do some predictions for freaking All In Wembley. All right, there are so many matches, so I'm going to try my best to bomb through these without trying to stop and think about it too much. I'm just going to go with my, my internal gut feeling, so... Uh, we got Auss- Aussie Open versus MJF and Adam Cole for the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championships. Going Aussie Open on this one, I think they're going to have some sort of seed planted in this match to set up for some sort of breakup or some sort of drama for the MJF Adam Cole match later on in the night. Jack Perry versus Hook, singles match for the FTW, going Jack Perry. FTR versus the Young Bucks. AEW World Tag Team Championships. I will go with the Young Bucks on this one. Uh, no offense, I think it's going to be a phenomenal match. I th- this looks, it could be the opener of this one right here. It's going to be a banger. Could steal the whole entire show. I just think it's time to move the titles back over to the Young Bucks. It's been a minute. Hakaru Shida versus Tony Storm versus Soraya versus Dr. Britt Baker. Four-way match for the AEW Women's World Championship. I would like it to stay on Hikaru Shida right now. That would be good, though I really like what Tony Storm's turned into. This kind of, uh, I don't know, schizophrenic type character. I don't really know what's going on with her, but uh, it's going to be tough because they got Tony Storm and Soraya. They're both like in the same stable together, so I could see that kind of backfiring on them. I'll go with Hikaru Shida. We've got Darby Allen and Sting versus Swerve Strickland and Christian Cage in a coffin match going Darby Allen and Sting. Though I feel, I mean, ugh, Christian Cage and Strickland right now are really, really big heels. So I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the heels get the win here, but I'll go with Sting. We got the Golden Elite that's Abushi, Omega, Hangman, Adam Page versus. Takeshka and the Bullet Club Gold. That's Juice Robinson and Jay White. Oh, that is a toughie. Really tough. I can't really bet against Omega and Hangman, so I'm going to go with the Golden Elite on this one. Six-man tag team match. Eddie Kingston, Orange Cassidy, and the Best Friends, and Penta, El Zero, Miro, El- <laughs> just Penta, versus Blackpool Combat Club, uh, Santana, and Ortiz. Oh, that is also a really tough one right here. I don't know. I'll go with the Blackpool Combat Club. They're just fucking brutal. They're probably going to tear apart. That whole entire stadium is going to be bananas. Singles match. Will Ospreay versus Chris Jericho. Going Will Ospreay all the way. I know Jericho is going to do the job right here. CM Punk versus Samoa Joe. Singles match for the real world championship. It's going to be CM Punk. That's just probably how it's going to go down. But it could be a banger, man. Like, it's... I know these guys are a little bit both past their prime, but I think they still got one more classic in them. I hope it's going to be at Wembley, dude. It's going to be nuts, but I'm going Punk. House... Though I want Joe to win. I would love that. We got House of Black going up against Billy Gunn and the Acclaim. Six-man tag team match for the AEW World Trios. Championships. Oh, boy. Boy, that's tough. Going House of Black. Uh, this could be Billy Match's retirement match right here. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I don't know. They already had the trios championships, I think. So, I don't know. I'll just go House of Black. And MJF versus Adam Cole, baby, for the AEW World Championship match. Singles match. 1v1 MJF or Adam Cole. Fuck, that is tough. I'm going to go MJF. I want it to stay with him. And if it's going to stay with him, I think he's going to do a heel thing. He's going to turn on Adam Cole. And we're going to keep this ball rolling. Though, if they keep the friendship going, I'd be a little bit surprised. But wouldn't be at all upset whatsoever. So, that 
is all the matches. Uh, yep, that's all the matches on the card. So that's my predictions. Love to hear what you guys got to think about that. So let's go into AEW Dynamite. They were in Duluth, I think. I don't really 100% know where the fuck that is, but that's where they're at. Duluth. Starting off with the Elite versus Bullet Club Gold. Jay White joins in with the Bullet Club beating up the Elite before the match can even begin. Elite battle back until Takeshka arrives for backup. FTR say, nah, nah. They join in on the brawl, a chaotic start to Dynamite. Uh, it's fine. I mean, understandably, they're go. this is the go-home show into... They're big, probably the biggest show they've had since the, the first freaking show for Dynamite and AEW and all that stuff. No one wants to get hurt, so they're just having a little bit of a brawl, getting some more heat added onto it. Pretty all right start. We got Renee. She has a hilarious and wholehearted interview with MJF, hyping up all in Wembley. This was fantastic. Thumbs up for that. We got John Moxley going up against Ray Phoenix. Moxley blasting Phoenix with lariats, just keeping him grounded. Moxley hits a top rope Death Rider. Oh my goodness, that was ridiculous. Thumbs up for that. Phoenix kicks out though. Jesus. Freaking Ray Phoenix and Penta are, are good for at least one or two outrageous kickouts in every match they're in. That was one of them. Moxley immediately locks in the chokehold. Ray Phoenix passes out. Moxley picking up the win. Mox, great job limiting Phoenix's high flying in this one. I don't know if he... He got off the ground a little bit, but not very much. Brutal strikes, as always, from... I would say both men, but definitely Moxley more so. And fantastic selling from Ray Phoenix. Great match. 8 out of 10. Blackpool Combat Club continue the beatdown. Ortiz and the returning Santana rejoining BCC. They are doing some serious damage to Phoenix, bashing him in the head with a crowbar. Oh my goodness. It's so bad a stretcher is brought out for Ray Phoenix. Now, I do believe that's just a work, folks. So he's going to be okay. But yeah, Santana and Ortiz, they're back now. I feel it's been like, I think they said a year now since they've both been back together. And they they, they do a little bit of a swerve, and they're joining the Blackpool Combat Club. Very interesting. Uh, yeah, that was cool. We move on. It is Will Ospreay and Chris Jericho's contract signing. Don Callis, of course, being an absolute scumbag, talking trash to Jericho. Will Ospreay goes off about how great he is, I agree, and how important this match is for him. It, that I mean, he's he's not wrong. He is, I don't know where particularly he's from in Europe, UK, but it's big match, big match. Anyway, Jericho fires back, telling Osprey he'd be nothing without him, so on and so forth. They have a little scrap. No one goes through a table, so, you know, pretty interesting. But a great segment regardless. This was awesome. I mean, fucking Osprey was fired up as fuck. He is going to go nuts in Wembley. It's going to be so much fun. Great shit. Thumbs up. We got Adam Cole. He's getting interviewed now by Renee. It's going great until Renee brings up Roddy, Roderick, Strong, or whatever. And if there's any tension with him and Max. Uh, Max. Yeah, just Max. Cole gets angry. He walks out of the interview. So, yeah, not as fun and wholehearted as MJF's interview, but uh, interesting. So, there's definitely a lot of stress for Adam Cole right now. Bye-bye. Tornado tag time, yay, is Darby Allen and Nick Wayne versus Swerve and A.R. Fox with Prince Nana. Wayne is dumped on his noodle right off the bat, how you doing? Nick comes back with a beautiful double Wayne's world on Swerve and Fox, that was fantastic, thumbs up for that. Uh, Nick, Nick Wayne's mom is also in the crowd watching, always a great idea. All four men brawl out into the crowd. Darby with a gnarly dive in the swerve, crashing into the announce table. Goodness gracious, don't hurt yourself before Wembley, Darby. Darby taken out, Swerve and Fox working over Wayne, but he continues to kick out of everything that they throw at him. Nick rolls up Fox. Darby grabs onto Swerve to steal the W. Fuck yeah, Team Damage Sponge, baby. Doing their thing, taking lots of damage, of course. Swerve and Fox working well together for the most part. I mean, they're kicking the shit out of Wayne, but, you know, they can take a lot of damage. 7.5 out of 10, this was a really good match. Love the tornado tag thing. It's no rules, you can go out and fight in the crowd and shit for as long as you want. Fuck yeah. Swerve throws a temper tantrum, calling AR Fox a loser, and fires him from the Mogul Embassy. Oh my god. 
goodness. Brian Cage takes off Fox's head. Darby and Wayne and Sting, they return to save AR Fox, even though they just were in a fight. I mean, all right. Darby, having mad respect for Fox, gives him his hand, and they have themselves a little bromant. Out comes Luchasaurus and Karishjian, who goes full scumbag trash talking. Mike, um, Nick Wayne's deceased father. Oh my goodness, Christian, you absolute scumbag. Fucking Christian will go after anything. And yeah, that was, that was some ultimate heel work right there. Thumbs up. We got FTR and the Young Bucks. They are interviewed by Renee. The two teams argue about legacy and whatnot. I'm better, you're better, so on and all that shit. Bucks are really getting under Dax's skin. It's uh, rather enjoyable. Good segment right here. We got Ruby Soho all by herself. Believe it or not, I cannot believe this, but Ruby Soho all by herself versus Sky Blue. Nice crossbody dive to the outside by Blue. Ruby using the referee to play possum, knocking Sky off of the top rope. She bonks her head on the way down. Look, look pretty nasty. We got a pinfall counter fest that ends with Blue nailing a Skywalk. Ruby kicks out of that. Soho battles back with a no future for a win all by herself. See, Ruby, I knew you can do it. And a good performance from both women. And I just cannot tell you, I can't express how much it, how refreshing it is to have no outside interference. Oh my God. I'm fine with Ruby doing her own thing, like hiding behind the referee. At least she's doing it by herself and on her own. She's not needing the help of others all the time. It makes her look like a competent wrestler. Yeah, good pace to this one. Nice high flying from Sky Blue. Too bad she couldn't pick up the win right here, but yeah, not bad. Seven at that. We got a no-nonsense acclaim. They storm the ring. No rap. Demanding House of Black to get they asses out here right now. And out those asses come. The lights go out. House of Black arrive. And they start beating up the acclaimed. But then, daddy ass is back. Crowd is going banana. Papa bum. He storms the ring. House of Black retreat. Father Anus, he cuts a promo and challenges House of Black to a trios match at All In, but Daddy Ass will not be there. Instead, it's going to be Badass Billy Gunn. Oh, baby, he cuts that good old fired up little promo right there. Awesome segment and an awesome moment for Daddy Ass, Papa Bum, Father Anus, whatever the hell you want. Good shit right here. Thumbs up. And yet another match added to Wembley. Did I... Yeah, I, I got that one in the in the predictions. There we go. Good stuff. Moving on. Main event time. Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships on the line. Aussie Open. Fletcher and Davis defending versus the Hardy Boys. Jeff and Matt Hardy. Uh, Aussie Open hit the Hardys with their finisher to retain the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. Uh, it was a solid match. It was just really standard for me. You know, Hardy's getting in the classic offense, which is great. Uh, but they just couldn't get off that swanton. I don't even know if they got off a twist of fate or not. Aussie Open, they get onto the microphone. They start trash-talking Cole and MJF, saying they will not hit a double clothesline nor a kangaroo kick. Nana! Cole and Max arrive. They have a little brawl with Aussie Open. Cole goes for a kick. Fletcher ducks it. Almost kicks MJF in the face, but MJF grabbing Cole's foot. They have a pretty intense stare-off. MJF considers smacking Cole with the diamond ring, but instead, they hug it out. Oh, oh, thank God. It's all going to be okay. They're going to make it to Wembley as best friends. Oh, very, very well done, uh, Go Home Dynamite. Heading into the massive Wembley show. Good matches, funny segments, more heat added to most of the rivalries, and another match added with Daddy Ass going to be there, man. Oh, in front of 80,000 people. Oh, I feel so good for Daddy Ass and pretty much everybody on this, on the card going to Wembley, man, like Britt Baker. Uh, there's so many, there's so many of them that like, this is, this is going to be huge for so many of them. Like, has Will Ospreay ever wrestled in front of this many people? Nick Wayne, he's 18. Wait, Nick Wayne's not going to be wrestling. But anyway, it's going to be fucking sick, dude. I am so excited for this freaking pay-per-view. It's going to be nuts. I just, oh. Okay, and now we'll, uh, we'll move over to Rampage. They were in wherever the hell they were. Starting off with an international championship match. Orange Cassidy defending against Aaron Solo with Harley. Harley does her big singing entrance thing for... She's a good singer. I will I will say she's a good singer. She's just annoying as hell. 
Harley distracting Orange with her singing. Solo hits a scary move on Orange. Almost dropped him on his head there. I don't know what the hell he was going for, but everyone's okay. Solo goes airborne with a stomp. Hits Orange with a boot or a shoe or some shit. I don't know. Orange kicks out of that. Hits Solo with an orange punch and a beach break. Pins and retains the international championship. An impressive performance here for Solo. He was hanging in there with Orange Cassidy. Even though, like, Orange Cassidy is just a walking injury at this point. He's always so taped up, walking around all injured and shit. But it was a solid performance for Solo. Entertaining opening match. You got the classic Orange Cassidy uh, comedy. I got a I got a good chuckle out of him doing the kicks to uh, Harley. That was good. Nice opening match. Seven and a half at then. We got a nice, good, fired up interview with JR interviewing uh, QT Marshall, who had a big weekend in AAA. He's like their champion now. I didn't get to see that or anything, but cool for him. And it was a good fired up interview. I'll give him a thumbs up for that. And we move into his match. He is defending the Latin American Championship. QT Marshall defending against Gravity. QT catching Gravity, power bombs him onto the apron. Ouch, that just looked, oh, so painful. QT throws up Gravity for a cutter, hits that, and then a huge power bomb, pins and retains the championship. Really good match right here as well. Hard bumps. The high flying from Gravity was on point. A little bit, a couple of slip ups, but it was all right. I really enjoy QT Marshall's move set. He's got really awesome moves, man. The cutter, the power bomb. Like, yeah, seven and a half at then. We have a Luchasaurus squash match. He wins that. Moving on. Main event time: Tony Storm and Soraya versus Hikaru Shida and Britt Baker. So these four women will be competing for the championship at All In. But for now, they're going to tag. We got Ruby interfering as always. She gets taken out by Chris Statlander. Tony sprays Sheeta in the face with the spray paint. Britt kicks Tony's head off. A blinded Sheeta accidentally clocks Britt in the head. Nightcap by Soraya and the Outcast win. An all right match. You know, setting up some more question marks going into this uh, fatal four way match at All In. Is Tony and Britt going to be able to. Um, or not Tony and Britt, Tony and Soraya, are they going to be able to, like, what's going to happen? They're friends going into this match, but someone's got to win if, like, they, you know, someone's going to have to get the pin to win. So it's going to be interesting, a solid match, and a good rampage overall. Though I don't like the squash match, but it was it was quick, so yeah, whatever. 7 out of 10 for rampage. We'll go over to collision now. We are starting with... Jack Perry, who pays homage to the FTW Championship, coming out with, like, the frickin' funeral thing or whatever. And then he has a lovely slideshow of all the good times that Jack had with the championship. Even though he's only had it for, like, a week, he's got pictures of, like, him at the pool and at a restaurant. It's, it's, I like that. That was pretty good. Um, But he says it's time to retire the FTW Championship for good. Perry pulls out a sledgehammer, but is interrupted by Hook. Perry takes a Tazplex Tazplex through the table, and Hook walks off like a badass. Nice opening segment for the show. We move on to a trio's tag match. Orange Cassidy, Penta, and Eddie Kingston versus Butcher, Blade, and Kip Sapien. We got a lovely Canadian destroyer from Penta. Kingston puts Butcher away, and the good guys win. Orange, as usual, taking most of the damage. Poor guy, man. He's got so much tape on him, like that fucking black medical tape. Like, I was joking, like, they might as well just wrap him up like a mummy in that tape by now. Like, that dude's got so many injuries, I would imagine, by now. Solid tune-up match before the Wembley show. Best friends come out. Trent still very pissed about his mom's van getting destroyed. BCC appear on screen with Ortiz and Santana. They're talking trash. Kingston has a meltdown. He walks to the back with a chair, throws the chair at absolutely nothing, cuts a crazy Eddie promo. Thumbs up. We got the Dark Order. Johnny, wait, is it Johnny Hungy? Hungy and Reynolds going up against Action Andretti and Darius Martin. Hungy and Reynolds with an outrageous tag combo, ending Darius for an impressive W. That combo was ridiculous. It was like seven moves. It was it was awesome. Um, 
Dark Order absolutely on fire in this match. Loving that tag combo stuff, man. Their combos are ridiculous. Nice high flying from Martin in action. Good back and forth match. Seven and a half at ten. We got a music video from the acclaimed. It was uh, rather awesome. So I'll hit that with a thumbs up. You can go check that one out. Big Bill absolutely obliterates a poor vampire Chris Angel looking dude. I don't know who he was. Ricky Stark smacks him with a belt as well. So yeah, vampire Chris Angel looking dude. Rough night for him. We got Willow Nightingale going up against Robin Renegade. Robin puts up a little bit of a fight here, but Willow puts her away with a spine buster. Basically a squash match, but not necessarily. We got Keith Lee going up against Ziggy. Keith destroys poor Ziggy with a pounce, a spirit bomb. Ziggy taking both of those like a champion, dude. Oh my god, he got like 90 feet in the air for that spirit bomb. It was dope. Thumbs up for his selling, I'll give him that. We move on to Samoa Joe. He cuts a quick promo and joins commentary for the main event. Eight-man tag team match. It's Hook. It's Darby. It's Sting. It's CM Punk versus Luchasaurus. Brian Cage, Swerve, and Jay White. And Christian is out there as well. Punk gets Cage up for the GTS. Locks in Joe's choke while staring him down. Cage taps out and the good guys win. An all right main event, mostly, you know, they got to play it safe here, except for Darby, he'll just, he'll always hurt himself at some point, uh, because they're going into the biggest show of their company's existence, and all these guys are going to be on that, so no one wants to get hurt, Samoa Joe loses it after the match, he goes after Punk, all hell breaks loose, everyone's fighting with each other as the show ends, and it was an all right go home show, uh, before Wenley, mostly tune-up matches, squash matches, a couple of little interviews here and there. It's, you know, I'm, I wasn't expecting it to be an incredible show, but it was it was fine. Like, honestly, it's skippable. Nothing too crazy went on there, unless you want to see Ziggy get destroyed by a beautiful powerbomb from Keith Lee. Five out of ten for Collision this week. And just to be confusing, we'll finish it off with SmackDown. So, uh, we start the show off with the, the 10 Bell salute to Terry Funk and Wyndham Rotunda, better known as Bray Wyatt. I have to just shout out Wyndham. That is a fucking really cool name, man. Beautiful video as well plays for Bray Wyatt going over his career in the WWE. Very, very touching stuff. We have the whole SmackDown rosters on the stage, and they have Bray Wyatt's rocking chair with like a nice beam of light coming down on it. Beautiful opening segment right here. You know, I got chills right now just thinking about it. And fuck, dude, like just seeing poor Braun Strowman on the stage, like fuck, dude, he lost Brody Lee, and now he's lost Bray Wyatt, like and and Rowan too. The 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 red, uh, he was also in the Wyatt family, but he was there as well. And like, I feel heavily for those guys that they've really gone through the ringer losing some very close friends and of course uh, uh the rotunda family like bray wyatt had children and yeah incredibly sad stuff but uh, a beautiful tribute right here ray mysterio is kicking off the show going up against grayson waller ray with a lovely tornado ddt counter goes for the 619 austin theory shows up distracting ray santos runs down to take out austin theory Ray hits a 619, splash, pins, and wins. Really good performance right here for the legend Ray. Solid match. Uh, didn't really do much for Grayson Waller here. Didn't make him look really competitive or all that into this match. Ray didn't even come out with the United States Championship. I have some question marks. It was okay. Women's Championship match up next. EO Sky with damage control defending against Selena Vega. Will she have a match over five minutes? Let's find out. We got a nice Meteora by Selena. The commentary was going fucking bananas about it. EO comes back, hits the double knees in the corner. Moonsault, pins, and retains. Solid match. Selena fired up performance, though it was short. I don't know if they broke five minutes. It definitely wasn't a long match. Um, it was fine, man. I mean, a nice first defense for, for EO. It was just kind of eh. It was all right. We move on, Cody Rhodes, he talks about Terry Funk, a nice video tribute for the Funker. Cody announces the next match is a Terry Funk hardcore tag match with the Brawling Brutes, Ridge and Butch going up against the Street Profits, so fuck yeah, man. I love the video tribute, uh, the thing that I, I love the most about Terry Funk is when he put the ladder on his head and he would spin around with it like a helicopter just bashing into people, fantastic. We got Ridge. 
Speaking of that, Ridge spinning Butch around like Terry Funk would with a ladder. He's hitting Butch into the profits, so just a fucking awesome touch right there. Bobby Lashley makes his arrival. Butch speared in half by Lashley, forward with a big splash, and they pick up the W. So, yeah, kind of a disappointing match. I was expecting a little bit more hardcore stuff for Terry Funk, but, yeah, Bobby Lashley comes down and spoils the fun. So, eh. And then we have L.A. Knight. He cuts a promo, yeah. Pays his respects to Bray Wyatt, yeah. Because they, I think that was the last rivalry Bray was or, uh, Bray was in was with L.A. Knight, if, correct me if I'm wrong. A little bit hazy on that, on that one. And then he is disrespecting The Miz, who he does not like very much. This was a good little promo. I'll give it a thumbs up. And then we move on to the main event match. L.A. Knight, yeah, versus Finn Balor, all by himself. Uh, Knight knocks Balor off of the ropes. He does the big leaping to the top superplex. BFT and L.A. Knight wins. Yeah, huge win right here for L.A. Knight. Looking very strong against Finn Balor. You know, a guy that was recently in the World Heavyweight Championship matches. A former champion himself. So, this does a lot for L.A. Knight, man. I'd say with a win like this over Finn Balor, that would put him in a main event positioning, I would think. Really solid match. And we get one... Final lights out tribute for Bray Wyatt, the old-fashioned way how they had the lights turn out with the noises and everything. Beautiful touch, and that's the end of the show. Um, I mean, I love the tribute and everything. The show itself was just kind of meh. Not a whole lot going on here. I would say it's skippable unless you want to see some nice tributes for Terry Funk and Bray Wyatt. Other than that, just kind of a standard SmackDown. I'd hit it with like a 5 out of 10. And uh, is that it? Do we have to do, let's do the 3 stars? I'm a little all over the map right now because I've been recording this over the last like few days. And I've been, yeah, so let's try and get this done here. We got the 3 stars. And then I'll, I'll talk a little bit about my um, my wife and I went to uh, Impact Wrestling Show last night, Emergence. So I'll talk about that quickly uh, after the three stars, if you want to stick around for that. So let's get into the three stars. Uh, I don't have any shout-outs written down right here, shockingly, but there were some good matches out there. I just didn't have them written down. I'm a dick. So third star this week goes to Moxley and Ray Phoenix on Dynamite. Fantastic match, man. I mean, Ray Phoenix and Moxley. I like the styles. Like, Moxley's so incredibly violent and a brawler, and Ray Phoenix... Uh, an insane high flyer, and it was a really good Mitch Mac, uh, mix for a good match. Check that one out. Second star goes to Gunther and Chad Gable for the Intercontinental Championship on Raw. Hell yeah, man. I was so excited for this match. I was just, I knew Gable would put on a fantastic performance. He'd be a great fit for Gunther, and yes, he absolutely was. Doesn't pick up the win or anything, but it was a really strong match. I quite enjoyed that. Good enough for the second star. And the first star goes to Trick Williams and Ilya Dragunov. Uh, NXT. What a match. I mean, this is probably the coming out party match for Trick Williams. I don't know if he's ever going to have, like, a, we'll see, man. Like, Druganov can make everybody look so freaking good. And he did so for Trick. But it wasn't like Trick was lost and just uh, very noticeably bad or anything. Uh, I thought he he stood his ground. He was quite good. He's still got a, a little bit more to go. Like, he's still pretty fresh. But, um... I was really, really impressed with that match. Honestly, it was better than I was expecting it, and it gets my first star this week, so congratulations, Trick Williams. Maybe you'll be back in the first star section again someday, so that would be really cool. And that is the three stars. So let's talk a little bit about my Impact Wrestling uh adventure I guess. I don't know. I went to Emergence with my wife, and it was fucking awesome, dude. It was so much fun. We were front row, we had front row seats, we were right beside, like, the ring bell guys, like, where they ring the bell and shit. It was fucking sweet, dude. Like, I, I had never been that close. We could, it was, it was definitely an experience. So, the only thing that I would say, um, about the seating is, like, I definitely had the most obscured view sitting that close. Like, if there was an eight-man tag, and then it would just be, like, eight dudes in front of me, I didn't really get to see what was going on in the ring that well. And, like, the ring post was kind of in the way. I was literally, like, in the area where people would be, like, running through. Like, if the ring crowd or the ring... uh 
fucking people have to come in and fix something in the ring. They're like coming through uh, right by me. I had Heath. Heath. Uh, Heath. Oh, fuck. I don't remember his last name. Heath. Uh, he came flying in, bro, and I got smashed by the fucking uh, barricade, and like, holy, scared the fuck out of me. Like, I knew someone was coming, but like, the second I put my guard down, I was like, all right, well, it's been like five minutes, no one's coming, and then the second I put my guard down, uh, Heath comes running by, and I was like, holy fuck, dude, and oh, dude, it was so much fun. So I got interactions with wrestlers that I, I've never had. I was so close to them. Um, the highlight by far for me was Bubba Ray Dudley going full heel mode on me and my wife in the front row. We brought our signs. We had a couple signs. We had like a PCO sign. Uh, ladders are better than tables. I had an edge head sign, which I was trying to hide. I didn't want to like throw up the edge head sign because I'm at fucking impact. But fucking Bubba Ray was there. And uh, Zack Ryder. And Zack Ryder used to be in, like, a stable with Edge when he was in WWE. So I was trying to get his attention, uh, Brian's attention, to look at my signs that I had to edge, edge head. And uh, Bubba comes over. He snags the sign out of my wife's hand. And he just starts slowly ripping it up into pieces. <laughs> he's, he's, he's literally ripping them up into as many small pieces as he can. He comes up to me. He's like, hey, do you want these back? I'm like, yeah. And then he fucking throws them all in my face. I was like, oh, oh my God. And Moose was out there as well. This was the big eight-man tag match. And I was all over Moose, man. Moose, I don't, I don't, like, I can't tell it was, I can't tell if he's acting or if he's just a very upset, angry person. But Buddy was looking at me like he was going to kill me. I was shaking my sign at him. I was telling him, I was like, Moose, do you want to wreck my sign too? And he grabbed my sign and he fucking like threw it into the crowd and shit. It was amazing, dude. Like, that's something I'm never probably ever going to forget. Like, it's so awesome being like seeing the guys that you watch on TV. They're interacting with you. Like, Moose was looking at me. Like, I yell things at him. He'd turn around and look at me. Like, it was fucking awesome. And Bubba, I got him, like, I was yelling and yelling and yelling at him. I was like, look at the other side of the sign. And he finally saw it. He saw that it said Edgehead. And then he goes over to Brian Myers like, hey, look at this. And Brian just shakes his head at me in disappointment. It was so freaking awesome, dude. Uh, I don't know if this was the same match. I think it was. Yeah, it was. Um, Chris Sabin was there. I saw, like, right in front of my eyes, I saw Chris Sabin go through a table. It was fucking awesome awesome Chris Saban proceeded to not move for like 12 minutes he just laid there I got to when the match was over I fucking tapped him on the back told him did a great job and he fucking gave me fist bump boy I was like oh my god this is so freaking awesome I saw Trinity and they gave out they gave glow sticks out to everybody and we're all fucking going nuts with the glow sticks honestly man like from I went to AEW, WWE, and Impact Wrestling shows this year. They were all on the same level, man. Seriously. Like, even though at Impact I was at a nightclub and at fucking the AEW and WWE, I was at the Scotiabank Arena with like 18,000 people. At this Impact show, maybe a few hundred of us were just kind of packed into this nightclub uh, with a fucking ring in the middle of the dance floor that's basically the setup and yeah not a lot of people but it really like once the show got going like you didn't even notice that there wasn't a lot of people around it was loud it was fun it was the most engaging show that I've been to in terms of the wrestler engagement they were interacting with us after before and after the show there they were just standing around like Alex Shelley was just hanging out on the floor and I talked to Ace Austin I told him how much he how awesome he is and he fucking you know gave me a wink and a thanks I was like oh my god I was looking bro I was looking for Bubba Ray Bully Ray bro I was like you fucked my sign up I was gonna yell at him and talk shit but Bubba Ray is probably my favorite guy man I love that guy he's like a legend like I, I just I was so happy to see him and oh just the fact that he healed on me I oh I slept like a baby I was so happy man I was just so happy that that happened um yeah we got I got to see a lot of really cool shit like got to see underneath the ring we got to see the ring getting taken apart we got to see uh what they do with broken tables like they just sweep it underneath the ring it was awesome like at one point throughout the show they were like freaking out trying to find something we're like what the hell are they trying to find they were looking for brooms so they found some brooms and then like all right i thought maybe they were gonna use brooms in a match later 
And then they didn't, but it was just to sweep the tables underneath the ring. That's what they do with them. They just slide it on underneath the ring. They'll clean it up later. I was like, oh, that's really cool. So, yeah, man, I had a fucking blast at Impact Emergence. It was a lot of fun. Um, I would recommend, you know, at least once if it's in your price range, like for us, It was probably the same price to sit in the front row at Impact as it was to sit in, like, a nice spot at WWE. So if I wanted to sit front row at a WWE show, it'd be, like, 500 bucks. It's quite expensive to sit in the front row and get that engagement with the wrestlers. At Impact, it was, like, 100 bucks or something, but for me, well worth it. I'll always recommend going to live wrestling shows. It's so incredibly fun. It's so engaging. It's just a blast, man. You don't even have to be the biggest wrestling fan but you can get into the chants you can get into it the wrestling they're all characters they're having fun they're performing for you it's a ton of fun and also um like i hadn't been that close before and i need i just gotta say like i don't think wrestling's like fake or anything i understand it's like predetermined and everything but dude those guys are hitting the shit out of each other they're slamming hard on that mat there's not a lot of freaking you know fluff on that on that ring it's wood underneath it with a little piece of fucking foam on top of it it hurts okay and they're smacking each other i saw people getting kicked in the face i saw people it's just they're getting hit like they try and pull it up a little bit as they can maybe they'll try and hit your your chest area instead of your face but they're kicking the shit out of each other in there man like watching a dude go crashing through a table right in front of me that hurts and he didn't move for 10 minutes so like yeah and he was in like You know, he was quite uncomfortable, Chris Saban was, when he got up. He's like, ah, jeez, ah. And, like, oh, man, there was at least 20 times where a wrestler would, like, I don't know, fall down in front of me, get hurt near me, and I'd be like, oh, you okay? And they're just like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, fine. And Leo Rush at one point just, like, brushed me off. And I'm like, Leo, how dare you? I care about you and shit. It's so much fun, man. Like, I loved it. Like, now I, I have an even more greater appreciation for the wrestlers that engage with the fans like when you're watching a tag team match and i don't know let's just throw bailey out there for example she's like she's really good and mouthy and she'll turn around and tell the crowd to shut your mouth and stuff like that i tell you that goes such a far like that goes so far for like that front row crowd man it's so much fun like engaging with the wrestler they're telling you to shut up you're like you suck and like oh man i love it so much freaking fun so yes i would highly recommend going to any live wrestling show in your area wherever it is go check it out man it's so much freaking fun i will i will be trying my best to go to every wrestling show that's in my area because it's just so much freaking fun and i love it so there you go everybody thank you so much for listening let me know what you have thought even though I know that uh, All In Wembley is over already, but let me know what you thought of the predictions. What predictions did you have going in? Did you already watch the show and everything? Let me know. I've watched the show. I just need to record it now, and that will be coming out fairly shortly. It'll probably be out tomorrow. It, it's probably going to be out tomorrow. So we'll probably move the, the Gamer Cast and the Hockey Cast over just a little bit to spread out the love, but the All In Wembley review will be up shortly. I just got to record that shit, and yeah, we'll be on our way with that. So again, thank you everybody so much for listening. You guys are awesome. The upcoming Gamer Cast is going to be on Final Fantasy VII, so you can look forward to that sometime this week. And we will be back again with more GX Plus Cast.